Um, most rewarding, I also created an organization called the National Latino Officers Association, mm -hmm. and where I've been advocating for the last 30 years of civil, civil rights work and defending the rights of, of minority communities, immigrant communities, as well as the officers in the police department against discrimination and abuses. Um, so I'm kind of of the belief, uh, as the son of your prophet said, those who are silent when others are oppressed, uh, they are guilty of being oppressors as well, and I believe in that wholeheartedly. If we sit back and we watch the things that happen to our communities and we don't take an active part, then we're as guilty as the people who are committing these things against us. And there's so much, so much work in our districts that has to get done. Um, so in that light, I say that I'm also a firm believer that we have to get active, right? Less than 10% of our community votes. If less than 10% 10, 10 of our community votes, that means that 10% of the population are making decisions that impact the everyday lives of your sons and daughters, of your families, and, and the businesses that, that exist here. So we have to work to make sure that we get 90% of the people active in voting and that we're empowering the diverse community that we have. So we've had a lot of instances. Queensboro Hall has the ability to create diversity, to include people who have been left out. And we have the ability to address those concerns of the districts. Um, the lack of services, the need for services, and the, the misclassification of assault cases. We did a press conference uh, on the other side of Brooklyn, actually, on the assault of the Islamic community residents that were being misclassified. They were not being classified as hate crimes, and, and they actually misclassified them, so they weren't investigated properly. Uh, so as a result of the press conference we did, we joined the, the Muslim Patrol, and as a result of joining that, that active um, we got all the commanding officers of the precincts to come together, the borough commander to come together, and to address that, this, the, uh, the assaults and the crimes that are happening in the community so that they address them properly. But it took a, co a cohesive effort to bring everybody together. Mm -hmm. That's part of what the mission and why I'm ready for. You can find a lot of women like gaining a lot of education, but they can't like find any job. Also the ones who travel. <laughs> and, and, no, it's, again, it's the same thing I say like this. The treatment has to be equal for everybody. They can't treat us separately. So when we start receiving complaints like that about treatment, the airports fall within my district. Right? right? They are within Queens, both of the major airports that are here. That means that we can have an impact on their policies and procedures uh -huh. if they're not being enforced equally and fairly. But sometimes they, they, they say it, like when you when you apply for a job and they, they tell you, okay, there is no discrimination, but when you go there and you're qualified to take this position, but because you are Muslim and you're wearing certain certain like attire, they tell you, oh, no, it's not going to be working out because, you know, it's like the way how you look. So there's this, this like subtle, yes. subtle discrimination. Yes, well, in, yes. In, it's sort of like, yes. a, like the police department when at first, you, if you were Hispanic, you couldn't, you couldn't be hired. And then they made a height requirement. If you weren't so tall, you couldn't be hired. We had this, we had you didn't have that problem, did you? I didn't have that problem. People that live here can't afford it, right? So they're not building it for the community. They're building it for people outside the community to come in. Mm -hmm. All of our houses, all of our hospitals currently are rated at sea levels. They got, why, would, why do we have that? How mm -hmm. are they servicing our community, the hospitals, if they're all under underperforming and they're overcrowded and then we have the same thing with the learning institutions almost all the schools are turning into not learning institutions but they're, they're housing our children 40 kids 35 to 40 kids in the classroom you, you can't teach in that climate mm -hmm. right so they're basically babysitting our kids and moving them on from one grade to the next so it's not an effective process of teaching and these are the things that we're talking about changing and working on but importantly also is that we need to have the representation in borough hall that's going to represent all the districts that are here, all the different communities that are here. And that's what we're working to change. The community boards have just been cited as being non-representative to communities. So we need to identify people from every community that are eligible to run. And those are appointments that we make. Well, 